I was not prepared for how tasty spam fritters are. I ate turkey Twizzlers at school and this is the school meal I'm dreading the most. This week, most students in the UK are going back to school. So I'm gonna look at the history of school dinners. At the turn of the 20th century, there was a lot of concern around the state of health in Britain. During the Boer War, the British government were really surprised by the state of health of many of the young men they were trying to recruit for combat. Many young men were deemed either too undernourished or too small to even join up. And the British government had spent a long time trying to tackle public health concerns like cholera and access to fresh water that no one had actually thought to deal with nutrition as a public health issue. So in 1906, the British government began a program to start providing free school meals for children. So we're gonna start with school breakfast in 1906, and that begins with porridge. In the beginning, it wasn't a legal requirement to provide free school meals. The British government made it so that local authorities could choose whether or not to provide free school meals at their own discretion and expense. And at first, they were only for children who showed actual signs of malnutrition. Gonna microwave that for three minutes. Lunch in those early days would be quite simple too. Bread, soup, vegetables, or even a stew would be quite standard fare. There we go, some slightly runny porridge. So most of those early porridge breakfasts that I've seen included black treacle with the porridge. <laughs> it's all just being absorbed by the porridge. So this is school breakfast now in 1906. You've got porridge with black treacle, served with milk, and you might also have had the option to have some bread with butter, margarine, or even beef dripping. Let's see what we do. I mean, it's porridge. I'm gonna try and stir in the treacle. It gives it an interesting amber hue. Hmm, I didn't think that porridge could look even more like sick. I mean, porridge makes a lot of sense for small children. Complex carbohydrates. However, these free school meals weren't for all children yet. These were just for those children who showed signs of malnutrition. It wasn't until World War II when the British government decided to roll out free school meals nationally. So if we're doing World War II, I think that I have to try and tackle spam. <laughs> So during World War II, the number of children needing free school meals rose drastically. But rationing meant that meals were often limited to basic low-cost ingredients like potatoes, vegetables, bread. So in 1941, the British government introduced the National School Meals Policy. This included dietary guidelines for the first time on protein, fat, calories. So in 1941, the same year, the British and American governments came up with the Lend-Lease Agreement, which guaranteed the British access to 45,000 tons of spam over the next five years. So, I'm gonna make some spam fritters. I'm oddly terrified by this tin. So spam was made by an American meat producer who were looking to find a better way to use their excess pork shoulder. Oh, that's, that's alarming. It kind of just smells like a pork terrine. Okay, so I'm not discouraged at the moment. Anyway, the British government were desperate for protein and spam was relatively cheap. It had a long shelf life and it was comparatively plentiful thanks to American supply. Schools were no different, they needed protein. <laughs> Like the world's worst ketchup tin. Oh, there we go. Wow. You can just see the gelatin coming out of it. <laughs> so to create Spam Fritters, I'm using a recipe from a 1940s school cookbook. So it calls for 100 grams of flour and a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. You read accounts of British school children raised during World War II, being raised on a diet of powdered egg and Spam. And apparently after the war, most of them, they didn't really like actual eggs or proper meat. They were so used to these alternative foods from rationing that they just didn't really like the original. I don't know what it is, but now the slices are actually intimidating me even more. It tells us to pan fry our fritters. I imagine at the time they maybe would have used dripping or shortening, but the cookbook I have doesn't stipulate, so I'm just gonna use vegetable oil. So having crisped up our spam, it feels only fitting to serve these with potatoes that have been boiled within an inch of their life, as has the cabbage. All right, let's just dive right in with a spam fritter. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, Spam has an undeserved bad rep. <laughs> it's actually really tasty. Throw in some more exciting potatoes and I would be chuffed with this as a school dinner. It's better than a lot of the school dinners I got. So Margaret Thatcher, Britain's creepy auntie, she was a teenager during World War II working at her parents' grocery shop. She would later refer to Spam as a wartime delicacy. I do kind of get that, but equally well, as we're about to discover, she was also the enemy of school dinners. And to unpack this, we're gonna look at school dinners from the 80s. After the Second World War, improvements to technology brought in fridges, ovens, and gave birth to a whole new wave of fresh food, and also puddings. So for the filling of our butterscotch tart, you need soft brown sugar, milk, butter, and plain flour. So to the pan, we need to add 100 milliliters of milk and 170 grams of butter. So we're gonna put this on a gentle heat until the butter's melted. By 1980, Margaret Thatcher was prime minister and her government was introducing a new education act. And amongst other things, this education act did three big things for school dinners. 
The first is it took away the right to free school milk. Secondly, it removed all minimum nutritional guidelines for school food. And it also took away the obligation for local authorities to provide comprehensive meals at school. Instead, food was only required for children whose families were getting welfare support. And so the number of children who were eligible for school meals went down massively. At this point, we're gonna add 170 grams of soft brown sugar. Melt that in. Then once that's incorporated, gonna add in 35 grams of flour. So now that's done, I'm gonna pour this and set aside to cool for a bit. So once your butterscotch filling has finished cooling in the fridge, pour it into a pre-baked short crust pastry case, let it sit in the fridge for a bit and you're done. Here we go, butterscotch tart. There is so little to dislike about this. I feel like I'm missing some really lumpy school custard for full effect, but this is where it feels like nostalgia got it right. This is great, but it's not fully satisfying me. I feel like for my history of school dinners to come full circle, I want to do my school dinners, and that probably involves tackling turkey Twizzlers. In case anyone is watching this from outside the UK, turkey Twizzlers were probably Jamie Oliver's biggest enemy in history. Turkey Twizzlers were a school food that kind of fell into the epicenter symbolically of this struggle between healthy school meal campaigners and what was being provided at the time. Essentially, it's just a spiral of reconstituted turkey meat, except you weren't actually sure how much actual meat was in the turkey twizzler. This all came to a head when the TV chef Jamie Oliver did a big campaign supporting healthy school dinners, and turkey twizzlers kind of got shafted out eventually. So the only option available to me is to recreate turkey twizzlers at home. And just like that, we have turkey twizzlers that, looking at them, were probably best forgotten by history. It just looks wrong on the plate though. I think we're gonna have to go full recreation on this. Let's get some potato smileys on here and some baked beans. I'm surprised to find myself asking, can I have the spam bag? All right, let's get this over with. Oh, like so much of nostalgia, turkey twizzers do not withstand the test of time. Thank you for making it this far. While I try and purge the taste of turkey twizzler from my mouth, please do consider subscribing or let me know in the comments if there's any other food you'd like to see me recreate from history.